Hi, this is Seth Gross, an architect at Argano. This is the second video in a series where we'll be looking at a few demos to show an example of leveraging the power of Salesforce's new revenue cloud capabilities by demonstrating running a completely non-native marketplace UI on top of Salesforce. From a technology perspective, we've chosen to use Angular, Angular Material, and Bootstrap running on Heroku. However, the choice of technologies will vary by implementation. The front-end tech stack will integrate to Salesforce using the Enterprise API and the new Revenue Cloud APIs to get at specialized capabilities. We will focus on a marketplace scenario where we have an existing enterprise customer in a self-service role performing various functions related to the product suite. In the first demo, we saw product catalog and customer qualification. The second demo will drive us through a purchasing journey where we'll look at product setup, execution of pricing, product configuration, and the business rule engine. In the final demo, we'll look at various asset lifecycle management functions. Now onto the demo. First, we'll take a look at the product setup in Salesforce. Here, we've set up a dedicated internet access bundle with some base information about the product. In the product structure, we can select from different leased routers with various product selections underneath. We've incorporated a mandatory fee and we have some optional add-ons. From an attribute perspective, we have two pick lists representing the data rate and contract term. Next, let's see what this looks like in the Salesforce UI for Inside Sales. I've got a quote started and already added our DIA bundle, which includes a mandatory installation fee. Let's go ahead and configure it. Up top, we see our two attributes, data rate and term. Then as we scroll down, we see our least router group, our optional add-on group, and our mandatory installation fee with the UI enforcing the cardinalities. Now we'll move on to the marketplace demo where we begin where we left off with our customer logged in and browsing the OmniWave catalog. We'll click the configure and buy button to start our configuration journey. The first thing that we want is to validate that our DIA bundle can be sold at a specific location. To do this, we've integrated to the Google Places API to search validated addresses. After I select an address, we are utilizing the Revenue Cloud Business Rule Engine where we check if a product, in this case our DIA bundle, is available for a particular zip code. As you can see with my first address, it is not offered and configuration is not allowed to proceed. I'll search for a new address at the Argonaut headquarters and upon revalidating with the business rule engine, I'm now allowed to proceed. Behind the scenes, we've already created a quote in Salesforce and initiated a stateful product configuration against the DIA bundle. The Revenue Cloud product structure and attribute definitions have been extended to dynamically drive configuration control UI renderings that we see here at runtime. Here in the first section, both of the attributes are pick lists, but have a different UI rendering based on a desired customer experience. Moving on past the attributes, we can select our preferred router and continue. Notice that our pricing procedure is executed and the total is shown in our order summary widget to the right. That seems a bit expensive and I know I can get the router at a cheaper price. I'll save the in-progress configuration and navigate to the quotes on our account. Here you can see my previous quotes and note that the latest quote matches the total from when we just saved. We'll request some assistance and try to get that router price reduced. This action will generate a task in Salesforce and notify the sales ops team that action needs to be taken with respect to a given quote placed on the marketplace. Hopping back into Salesforce now, I'll refresh my tasks and notice that a new one's been generated through the marketplace requesting a discount, and it's also related to the quote that our customer created. As I expand my DAA bundle, I can see the in-progress configuration and I'll decide to give a 15% discount to help win the deal. Clicking Save will validate the configuration and reprice the services in the quote utilizing a configured pricing procedure that's unique for the business. 
Back in the marketplace, you'll note that before I refresh the page, we still have our undiscounted price at $889. After the refresh, we see the same $779.15 that was discounted in Salesforce. I'll proceed with my quote, which is now going to restart the configuration. My address is saved along with the availability confirmation from the business rule engine, and I can see the selection of my attribution as well as the router. Proceeding into additional add-ons, I'll add the Wi-Fi extender and continue. Note that I have professional installation added and can't remove it. And I'll continue and then accept the T's and C's and submit the order. Submitting the order will trigger a few different Revenue Cloud APIs. First, we'll end the configuration and then save it down to the quote. Next, we'll proceed to progress the quote to an order so that it can then be picked up by the delivery team. Here, the marketplace indicates that order 578 has been created. If I go to my orders, I can see order 578 along with the other orders that have been placed in the past as well. Back in Salesforce, we'll navigate to the orders and after I refresh, I can see order 578 in draft status. I'll drill into the order and activate it, which represents fulfilling the order to the customer. On the customer account in Salesforce, I'll navigate to my managed assets tab and scroll to the bottom. Here you see my provision DIA bundle, its components and their pricing. And finally, back in the marketplace, the customer can see the same DIA bundle and components as well. This concludes our second demonstration in which you saw how we defined a product and exposed Revenue Cloud capabilities using an external UI framework by leveraging the Salesforce Enterprise and Revenue Cloud APIs. Of note was that we integrated the Business Rule Engine, utilized a dynamic and declarative UI, successfully executed product configurations, saved and resumed quoting, and push the sale from quote to order to asset. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach us at salesforce at argano.com.